a very warm welcome to Design Espresso. I'm Elisa and I will be hosting you today. Hopefully you're all comfortably settled now or getting there. So let me set the scene. If you think of the future, you might have either one of these two attitudes, broadly speaking. You might have a great vision in your mind, you know exactly where you need to be. Or you might say, haven't got the faintest. I'm curious about it. I'm a bit afraid of it, but I don't know. And I would argue we need a bit of both. The topic of today is the next 20 years of design. So here they are, the next 20 years. You can now imagine them ahead of you. And you might wonder, why does it say salut? So when I was creating this, I thought, hmm, why shouldn't I put the greeting in the language we are most likely to speak globally, most spoken language, in 20 years or so? So I went on Google, started searching and researching, and I found this. And you know what my immediate reaction was? No. <laughs> There's no way, French. What about Spanish, Chinese, Arabic, even English? You know, that article is old. The data must be wrong. Even the author goes on to say, you know, you're probably not going to believe this. But they also stated this, they cited this research. And I thought, that's a big number, you know. Oh, in my immediate gut reaction, I had forgotten the existence of an entire continent and countries beyond France, where French is one of the shared languages. That's pretty embarrassing, right? So whenever we make a prediction, it never captures the whole of it, just a part of it. And it will be limited by our biases, the knowledge we have available at that given point of time, and on our emotional reaction to that. So I still wasn't completely, you know, sold that French is the only answer. And I went to research and I found this other article that stated, if you want to know the language of the future, it really depends on the question you are asking. So depending on what your intent is, the answer will be different. And we might look at this and say, you know, great, we now have a list we can work with, but it's not really detailed. It doesn't tell a rich story. So we might do, uh, we might take a database of 2.2 million books and look at the languages these tend to be translated to. And now we have a much granular, richer story of the languages people will flow, switch in between. But then, at least a data set like this, it looks towards the past, and now we have to discuss what it means for the future, for our future. So again and again, we will come at these crossroads where we make decisions for our future. And Camilla, she will be talking today about creating an emotionally safe space to do so whether you're doing that with yourself or with others. And we designers, we've traditionally been very proud of our ability to prototype the future, to see what it might, how it might work, what it might feel like, and then make it a reality. So this is one of the mindsets I would like for us to take to the future. But then there are these two things, these two concepts that sometimes get muddled do you need to be a visionary in order be, to be a design leader? If you are a visionary, then you have unique access to early adopters. And those early adopters tend to be highly visible, highly influential. If you are a leader, you are able to scale successes again and again. So it's great to have both, but they're not necessarily the same. But we designers, we don't get the monopoly on what the future should be. So if you've been to any conferences these past years, you've most likely noticed a massive increase in talks on ethics, 
on the implications of our work, especially when they're not as great as we thought they would be. So maybe you will find your inner rebel again. Maybe you will find your dogged optimist that does not give up, that refuses to relinquish your values, even though you're in the midst of a soul-trenching stage of an initiative. But then again, if you think of a social movement, it's not about the opinions of one person, that's a cult. And trying to save the world on your own, that's a really good way to burn out. So you need to involve others. And I want you to hear this with a big O, others. I'll give you one example. So Haley, she stated that human rights is the thing we should bring to our work. And she's worked with accessibility, the ability of people to access our services in a way that's easy for them, right? And she stated, it's not something you do for people, it's something you do with people. Whenever we speak of the future, there are these dystopias thrown around. We will lose our jobs to machines and smart algorithms. Our societies will be so unstable that we won't care about our career. We'll be just focused on bare survival. Or maybe on the brighter side, every kid in school will be taught design and they will reinvent it, and will be left as the dinosaurs. There's always this emphasis on the radical stories, the different stories, this future, futuristic stuff. And then we might miss out on the mundane, everyday decisions we make that slowly, step by step, take us towards a completely different place than we used to be. Either way, I think it's a pretty safe bet to say that design as we know it today will be extinct in 20 years. What will get us through that? At least I'd hope it will get us through that. It's making sure that the work we do is meaningful, that it makes lives better, both for the people we work with and the communities we serve with our work, or could be serving with our work. So you probably have a goal in your mind, and you can think of this as an individual or the company you work for. You might say, you know, if I'm completely honest, I think of that goal, I'm not a leader. Our company is far from being a leader in that field. But at least we can be an ally. So these are the four roles I would like you to try out today and in the years to come. And whatever you think the future holds, you should keep asking why. Why do I believe this way? Why do I think it matters? And by the way, this impact on why, on the impact you're having, this is exactly the culture that you are is driving in his current role as design lead. And you, our dear audience, are in the perfect position to ask some why questions today, or even what or how questions. So remember, hashtag design espresso. Thank you.